While not all details of the CEWS or Canada Emergency Wage Subsidy Program have been finalized, and I'm just going to call it the Q's, let's go over what we do know as of Sunday, April the 5th, 2020. And keep in mind, until this bill is passed in Parliament, details of the program may change. The Q's does not replace the originally announced 10% wage subsidy. It is a separate measure. It works a bit differently, and it provides a 75% wage subsidy to eligible employers. This subsidy would be available for up to 12 weeks, backdated to March 15th. And note that this subsidy is taxable income to the business. So who is an eligible employer? Essentially, anyone or any entity that is not in the public sector. Eligible employers include individuals, nonprofits, corporations, and registered charities. Not eligible are governments, crown corporations, public education institutions, and hospitals. Also needed to qualify for the 75% wage subsidy, you will need to have experienced a 30% or greater drop in revenues versus the same period a year ago. The reference periods are the calendar month periods for the purposes of calculating the drop in revenue. And there are currently set to be three reference months, March, April, and May. So if the revenue in the month of March this year is at least 30% lower than March 2019, you would qualify for the first period. You would also need to pass this test for each of the two following calendar months of the program. Now, the claiming periods are when you could apply the wage subsidy against remuneration paid to employees. And here are the three claiming periods and note that they are each 28 days long. Now, how do you calculate revenue for the comparison? Well, you use the same accounting method your business normally uses, and you exclude revenues from extraordinary items and amounts on account of capital. So what does that mean? That means that if you sold a capital asset this March, it won't be used in the calculation to see if your regular revenues dropped enough to meet the eligibility requirements, which would have made it harder to qualify. But conversely, if you sold a capital asset last March, it won't make it easier to meet the eligibility criteria either. How much is the subsidy? The wording is a bit tricky to interpret, so let's break it down. From the Department of Finance backgrounder, we see that it is the greater of one, 75% of the amount of remuneration paid up to a maximum benefit of $847 per week, and two, the amount of remuneration paid up to a maximum of $847 per week or 75% of the employee's pre-crisis weekly remuneration, whichever is less. Okay, so what this basically means is that if there is no change to how much you pay your employees, the subsidy is 75% of their pay up to a maximum of $847 per week. If you reduce the pay to an employee, it is possible your subsidy can be 100% if you don't top up the remaining 25% of their pay. The government has said employers must do their best to bring employees pay up to the pre-crisis levels, however, and therefore you are strongly encouraged to do so if you are able. Now, note that there is no limit on how many employees you can have that would be eligible, so the size of your company does not matter. You could have 10,000 employees and could still qualify for a wage subsidy for all of them. If you are hiring new employees since the crisis began, then the subsidy is 75% of what you pay them up to the same $847 per week max. And one special note, for employees that you do not deal with at arm's length, the subsidy is a bit more restrictive so that you can't just give Junior a big raise and have the government foot the bill. So keep that in mind. Now, you have to apply for the CEWS or Qs through either your CRA My Business account or a web-based application, details of which have not yet been released to my knowledge. And a word of warning, the messaging has been quite clear from officials. 
If you abuse the program, including not using the subsidy to pay wages as intended, the penalties look to be quite severe. Some final notes. If you are eligible for both the 10% wage subsidy that was originally announced, as well as this new 75% wage subsidy that we're talking about here, you can use them both at the same time, but the benefit claimed under the 10% program would offset the benefit you can receive from the CEWS or Qs. Also, if an employee is eligible to claim the CERB, the Canada Emergency Response Benefit, you could not claim the CEWS subsidy for any pay that employee receives in a week that coincides with that employee's four-week CERB benefit period. So, all this means, get a good accountant. Um, if enough people are interested, I can put together another calculator, this time for business owners, to help them ascertain how much of a subsidy they can get for an employee based on their pre-crisis pay and the current level of pay. Let me know in the comments section for wherever you are watching this if you're interested in that. And then again, if enough people are interested, I will put together that calculator. I encourage you to subscribe to my feeds to stay updated as things change because I have a feeling lots of little things are going to change over time. In the meantime, stay vigilant, stay safe, and I will see you in the next video.